Hi, my name's Gareth Spence. I'm currently in York, one of the UK's oldest cities. However, I'm not here to talk about the past. Today, we're talking about the future, and specifically the future of enterprise networking. To help me do this, I'm joined by two key people in the industry, John Bretherick from OpenReach and Darren King from Adva Optical Networking. Gentlemen, thanks you for joining me here today to talk about this exciting topic. Thanks very much. Fantastic, good. Um, John, it's been an incredible few weeks for OpenReach. Recently, you held an event where you focused on your optical spectrum services, also known as OSS, and the event was a real success. You know, looking at the coverage in the media, you know, light reading, looking at what analysts were saying, and also people that attended the event, it seemed to be really well received. I was just wondering, can we start the discussion by talking about OSS and what you actually did at this event? Yeah, sure. We, we held a, uh, a customer event on the 10th of October. Um, it was a well-attended event, met all our expectations. And it's the first event that we've, we've had of this nature focused on optical spectrum services. It's, the timing's right now with regards to customers' expectations, with growth in the network, with requirements for the transportation of large amounts of data. Uh, a number of applications that, that customers are looking to support are going through the roof, whether it's high definition video, whether it's um, mobile backhaul, whether it's the uh, interconnection of data centers and the transportation and, and backup and recovery of large amounts of data. So it's a huge event and it's something that we're, you know, we're very pleased with the, the pull through that we've had and the discussions that we've had with customers since the event and it's really exploded our um, conversations with customers in this area. Sure, you mentioned you know, the, the huge explosion in data and, and all these applications that are really driving this demand. I've been speaking to enterprises over the past few weeks and they're all saying that they, they need more from their networks. They need, they need them to do more, to facilitate more applications, more data intensive applications. And what, what is the OSS and specifically, you know, Darren with the, with the Adver FSP3000, what is it offering? It's offering now a, um, a better price point with more flexibility to transport high bandwidth. Uh, we've had the capability for some time and we've delivered 10 gigabit services uh, on optical spectrum services since 2009. What we're looking at now is a more cost effective, more flexible solution that has uh, more capability with regards to the interfaces and the applications that we can support, and also some, some real uh, changes in, in, in space and power requirements for the services that we're actually delivering, which, is, which has been feedback from customers is absolutely key moving forward to ensure that we have a, uh, a range of options where we can start from a, uh, a small form factor with regards to the, the network terminating equipment and actually deliver a full suite of services at a cost-effective uh, rate. Yeah, sounds ambitious. Um, Darren, um, working for Adver Optical Networking, a company that really began by providing enterprise solutions, you must deal with a lot of these issues every day. What, what is Adver Optical Networking doing here with the, with the FSP3000 to help open reach and, and ultimately enterprises? I think John's probably alluded to a few of them, but I think some of the key points or the key pain points for, for open reach were around sort of uh, reach, uh, lead times and price points. Obviously with the 3000 and its modular nature, it is inherently cheaper um, from a pricing point of view to, to the open reach um, customers. Um, also, from a reach point of view, we're now extending the reach of the, the OSS portfolio from an adver point of view. Before, we were, we were limited, whereas now we can actually go up to around 50 to 55 kilometers radial. And then also, as John mentioned, around the, the scalability, we've now got a one U shelf in there as well. So customers can now scale all the way from one wavelength all the way up to 32 wavelengths. And in many cases, if they use the right components, they can do that without it being service affecting. So Darren, you mentioned some really big topics there. And I think one of the ones that really is of interest to me and I guess a lot of uh, the audience would be reach and the elimination essentially, I suppose, of mid-span huts, you know, allowing people to go continuously uh, through the network without having to bridge gaps. What specifically has Adver done there? Yeah, so we've worked with the OpenReach product line um, and also the BTI&D guys to actually look at how we can limit the number of 
mid-span points. At the moment, from day one, Adver won't be using mid-spans, but it is something we're looking to use in the futures. The, but the way we've done that is through using the core cards. Now, the core cards are our high-level cards. They're the ones that can actually go, they're distance optimised, basically. They can go further in the network. So what that means to an end customer is there's no need to have that mid-span point in, in their network, which is key to them and, and ultimately saves them money and also, from an open reach point of view, saves the engineering and the the you know, searching for sites to actually sure, place yeah. that mid-span point. Okay, and guys, one of the key things I suppose is going the extra distance is great, but you have to go the extra distance in a secure fashion. So does the OSS now enable people to go further, um, quicker and more securely? I think quicker, yes. You know, through the, some of the cars, like I say, the low latency cars that we've got approved under OSS, there's that ability to do the low latency side of things, which is fantastic. And I think for customers like the finance industry, it's such a big positive for those. You know, every millisecond counts in this world nowadays. So, you know, that, that's really important. And then from a from a, a security point of view, we're actually working with the OpenReach guys again to look at bringing out the encryption card, which is a, a product that Adva have on the 5TC card, and hopefully by the end of next next year we'll be looking to launch that as well. Okay, so it's great to hear the cohesion between OpenReach and Adver. It sounds like there's a real, you know, obviously a close working partnership there. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, how you're ent helping enterprises to use their networks as a competitive edge, really. How does, you know, when an enterprise comes to you and uses the OSS, how does it give them an extra edge in the competitive landscape? Well, I think one thing to, to just add to the working relationship with, with Adver and, uh, and OpenReach is <clears throat> the development that we've done on the FSP 3000 has been working hand in hand with our customers, with our communications providers. So this isn't something that we've just decided we're going to sure. do. It's absolutely been driven by customer feedback. It's got their top requirements built into the initial launch that, we, that we'll be doing at the end of January and in working hand in hand with customers we've looked at their requirements, we've looked at the reach uh, situation, we've looked at how we actually have design rules and, and requirements to enable customers to go that bit further and to look at individual bespoke solutions that in the past we, we, we didn't do. We had a fixed uh, approach to uh, a distance limitation of which now we're actually working with Adver to actually design bespoke solutions individually based upon the technology that uh, is, is delivered, the FSP 3000, and the fibre routes that we're able to actually put in the ground. One of the things that, that Darren mentioned around uh, the financial institutions and the financial marketplace is that we've seen now um, a great interest uh, from the financial marketplace in being able to provide resilient services and, and the service that we call a, a resilience option one from OpenReach, which is a diverse uh, fibre pair or diverse fibre path with a, a single NTE on, on either end. Um, going that bit further has been really important to them and it's been really important to them with regards to the trends in the data centre marketplace of we're now seeing data centres being built outside of London City and Docklands, outside of the M25 corridor, from a resilience perspective, from a adhesion to FSA uh, standards and compliance, which has meant that a whole new marketplace is now, uh, has now opened up to us with the cost-effective nature of the solution that we're able to provide. Okay. And I think that le you know, it leads back into what we're talking about around the core cars. I mean, you know, one of the biggest drivers for the core cars was the distance. And as John mentioned, you know, things like the FSA, Subbanes, Oxley, all of these things are driving these data centres further and further out. So you know, that ability for a customer to replicate their data held in central London outside of the M25 is you know, really important now to, to end customers. And then, as John mentioned, from a pricing point of view, suddenly this isn't now just a, a service that's only available to the, to the big banks. It's now actually coming down to a price point where, where high street retailers can actually start looking at this service as well to, to suit their needs. Okay. okay, it sounds like a very flexible solution that can essentially scale with an enterprise's needs. Could you talk a little bit about that, how it scales? Is it you know, the FSP 3000? Are there other elements to consider? Yeah, sure. One of, one of the things that we, that we absolutely focused on with our customers from, from a feedback perspective was uh, our 
OSS systems or OSS solutions from the past were very much tailored on the high-end marketplace. So we started with a solution that was capable of delivering 32 wavelengths on day one, which has a cost associated with, with, with the build. The feedback from customers was we need a more modular approach. So what we've done with the introduction of the FSP3000 is to have a range and tiered approach where a customer can start with a solution that will deliver one wavelength or that will have a capacity to deliver four wavelengths or a capacity to deliver wavelengths in, in groups of four. So we've actually made the solution uh, a modular approach and what we've done is we've made the solution to be able to be upgradable in the majority of cases non-service affecting, which again is, is a, you know, a feedback from our customers as to absolutely a key requirement for the future. Okay. You mentioned service affecting there, and I, I know that a lot of people, or IT teams, really focus on the, uh, you know, the five nines, the 99.999% uptime and reliability. It seems that most enterprises can't even afford that 0.1 of a percent. You know, it's really a critical factor. So it sounds like you guys have really helped to address delivering a, a reliable service. service. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I think they've got all of those options there now. As John mentioned, if that isn't that important to the end customer, they can just go with a, a single or a standard, a one-u shell. But they understand the risks that they, they haven't, you know, they can't scale that over and above that. But then, the, you know, they do have the options to put in the, you know, non-service effect in 8GSM to allow it to go all the way up to 32 wavelengths. Uh, and then further on that, you know, you look at the services that OpenReach offers. So there's a single or a standard, basically a point-to-point -point service, two boxes either end, uh, sorry, two, two boxes, one either end and a piece of fiber between. But then you go into the resilience options as well. So RO1, it gives you the fiber protection, but no chassis protection. RO2 gives you dual everything, dual cars, dual chassis, dual fibre. For, for the customers like a finance industry, the healthcare authorities, that's where they're going to be looking. They, they, they do want, like you say, the five nines and above to, to meet what they require from a, from a, from a business point of view. And, and another point to add to that, that one of the things that we are seeing more and more now is the requirement to actually prove the resilience and prove how we're actually delivering, delivering a resilient service. One of the things that, that OpenReach prides itself and always does is that it will use dedicated fibre for a customer's solution. So that once a, uh, an end enterprise has a solution f built for themselves, they're in full control with their communications provider as to the upgradability, if that's a word, uh, of a solution. Um, it's dedicated fibre for a primary route, it's dedicated fibre for a secondary route, and we ensure that uh, the resilience from end to end is always delivered. And that's something that, that we know is, is unique to open reach across the whole of the UK with the coverage that we have. Sure. And I, yeah, I, I have to say, I'll just reiterate that point. I think that's a key point, you know, with open reach's foot, footprint from a fibre point of view, there is no shared infrastructure here. This is very much a dedicated service to those customers, so you know, they can really glean the benefits of that. Okay. If we drill down a little bit now into the, the FSP3000, Darren, you've talked a little bit about what it's capable of, but is there an issue here with power and size for a unit that can do so much? Is it you know, big? Is it going to cause IT teams problems to keep it cool, to run it, or is it...? No, and it goes back to the, you know, the, the options that we've given. So you know, if there is an issue from a space power point of view, you've got the one new shelf that you can use there. So if you are a, a, a CP, a communication provider in a BT exchange where you're running out of space within that exchange, you can make use of the uh, you know, daisy chaining one new shelves and go up to four wavelengths. And you might look at that and think, you know what, that, that's enough for me. If not, you've got the seven new chassis. But within that chassis, and due to the modular nature of the FSP3000, you can put your wavelength cards, your filter cards across all of that chassis. We're no longer in the, in the realms of as we have done with previous products where you were fixed and saying, if you want a wavelength one, it has to go in slot one. That, that's all gone away now in the 3000. So I think from a space and a power point of view, I think Adva's best of breed. Right, okay. John, this sounds like an exciting service. So, so when can customers take advantage of it? Sure. We, since the uh, event that we had, the customer event on the 10th of October, we've had a proactive sales campaign working with all our top customers 
We've been explaining to them the OSS portfolio, the changes to and the developments that we've got underway. We've been working with ADVA um, on, on pre-launch pricing and what we've done is we've, uh, we've launched uh, pre-launch pricing and design on the 1st of November. Uh, we have had uh, exceptional um, number of requests for, for design since then and we're confident of a launch on the, uh, towards the end of January. What one thing that uh, OpenReach does have is a, a large number of people who are focused on the delivery of, uh, of OSS designs uh, and OSS solutions. We've got over 100 uh, pre-sales uh, people both in design and product line actually focused on this and it, it's, it's a key element uh, that we're able to provide our customers uh, with the security that we're able to actually deliver services uh, to the time frames that we uh, that we're committing to. Just to add to what John said, you know, the, the extension of that team as well goes back into the Adver team as well. We have a large number of people dedicated to the FSP 3000 from an OSS point of view in Adva as well. And just to quantify the number of design requests, we've actually done 135 design requests in, in, since the 1st of November, so in five weeks, which is fantastic. And it kind of just shows that the, the service that OpenReach is launching is really hitting what the customers want out there. So the lead time reduction, the reach extension, the price points, all of those things must be, must be hitting the right points with the customers, which is fantastic to see. Fantastic, okay. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today and providing some insight into what people can expect from enterprise networking going forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. If you'd like to know more about this service, uh, we will be holding a live chat where you can actually address questions directly to John and to Darren. Details of this will be at the bottom of your screen shortly. However, if you can't wait and you need to have information now, please visit www.openreach.co.uk forward slash optical for more details on the OSS. And for more details on the ADVA FSP 3000, please visit www.adveroptical.com.